your life, your city. Live from WDTN, welcome to Living Dayton. Hey, good afternoon to you. Welcome to a very special library edition of Living Dayton. I'm Zach Pitts. And I'm Sally Taylor. We are live from the new downtown Dayton library. We are so excited. And you know what? There is so much to see here. There is so much to do. And it sounds like the kids are pretty excited as well. I can hear them in the background. Of course, we're going to be showing you the children's area as well. There is a castle. There are video games. There is so much to do in there. I can't wait to show them. I cannot wait either. And you know what? We're also going to be talking about technology from searching for jobs and updating your skills to checking out a laptop computer. We're going to give you all the resources that are available right here at the library. And Sally, believe it or not, you can actually order food here at the library. We're going to be talking about the special partnership between the library and Table 33 and also a very cool app where you can order dinner again right here from the library. I think that is just awesome and again there's so much to see there is so much to do we've only scratched the surface we have it all covered for you we can't wait to show you but right now we're going to check in with news and weather well, after two years of construction and all the support from local voters, the new Dayton Library is open in downtown Dayton. Executive Director Tim Cambage is here with much more. Here we are. It's, it's open now. So many people enjoying the facility here. Well, we're so pleased to have you here. We're so pleased to have so many people coming in and taking advantage of this new main library in downtown Dayton. It's been a long time coming too now that we're seeing it all in all of its glory. It all started with the Smarter Future Initiative. What was that? Well, that was the bond issue that voters approved in 2012 that allowed us to not just do this building in downtown Dayton, but 16 branches throughout the service area. And you know what? You can't do it without good managers. That's right. We have a great team that's helping us pull this together and to operate this building with world-class service. I think it's only appropriate that we take a quick moment to introduce all of them. Let's go ahead and start with Kimber Fox. She is your manager here at the new main library. Jackie Fullwood, she's going to be the main youth services manager. We have Charles Romine. He's going to be your borrower services manager. Next to him, Sean Wright, Information Services Manager, and Jamie McQuinn, Special Collections Manager, and last but certainly not least, <laughs> Greg Havey, Administrative Manager. Now, I think we need to also talk about the grand opening. So we've been open for quite some time. You guys had a huge celebration to celebrate this library. Well, we opened uh, on August 5th, and it was a great celebration. We had 7,500 people come in the doors. It took almost a half hour for people to come in because they would walk through the door and they would stop and look up and just really appreciate the, the volume of space, the, the wonderful uh, accommodations that this uh, new library has. That's funny you said that because that was my experience. When I walked in today, I was like, Wow. I'm, I mean, I'm just looking everywhere, up and down and all around. It's gorgeous in here. Well, there's a, a little girl, I think she was a fourth grader, that came up and told me that this was the best day of her life. <laughs> I've had people tell me that, you know, it's like a cathedral in here. Uh, people have taken advantage of the space, and that's the one thing that I find most satisfying, is to see that people are using the library as we hope they would be, that they're taking advantage of the quiet reading room, they're taking advantage of the gaming systems that we have, have for the teens and, and young kids that their uh, kids are enjoying themselves and we want them we want them to bring their parents back to drag their parents back to the <laughs> library on a regular basis and I think a lot of the features of this building are really going to bring people back on a real regular basis. I also think a lot of the features are going to be bringing in new patrons as well. Right one of the things that we certainly want to do is make certain that we accommodate those traditional library users that come that browse the collections to be able to see what we have uh, in uh, media and the, the traditional library services but we have so many other opportunities to interact and let our patrons interact in new ways to make the the library a community hub. You know back in the day you just had books in a library. Now um, you have it all. Well, it is trying to be a lot of things to everybody so that they can experience the library how they want to. Yeah. So if they were a business person and they want to get together with uh, perhaps some of they're collaborating with on a new project, they can come to the library and do that and perhaps get access to some of the expertise we have and some of the materials about business planning. And like we may have somebody that is 18 that is just trying to figure out what is it they want to do is their career to engage with our staff to kind of explore ideas for what might be their future. 
Time and time again, we've heard that there is something for just about everyone at the new main library. What is the one thing that you think everybody and their brother and sister <laughs> is going to love here at the new main library? Well, they will enjoy the volume of the space and the way in which it feels welcoming, that you want to come and you want to stay. And that's what we've noticed is that people are coming and they're staying longer because they want to enjoy the space and they want to bring their friends and family. I've already spoken with a lot of people who have come from out of town who have brought a, a parent or something. Somebody then, they want to share this. They want to be proud of what Dayton has because this is the library that our patrons deserve. And I got to warn parents, I really do. If you can't hear it, the kids behind us are laughing, they're giggling, they're playing. It's going to be hard to get kids out of here. Yes, one of the things that we've noticed that there actually has been an increase in the number of kids crying as they're leaving the library. And I think <laughs> yeah. it's because they want to stay. Yeah. I believe it. <laughs> I think it's safe to say that you guys definitely set the bar really high. And I'm sure that... Um, uh, libraries across the country, they're going to take notice of this facility and say, we need to do it like Dayton does. Absolutely. I've already had over the last couple of years as we've been unfolding our planning process and the way in which we've been doing the construction of these new buildings that we've had libraries throughout the state, throughout the nation that are talking to us about it. I'm giving a presentation next week about what we're doing in Dayton. I think we've got a, a library system that's to be really proud of. Well, your Dayton Metro Library certainly has a bright future. Tim, thank you so very much thank for taking the time you. to talk to us. There's no doubt about it, the new main library has so many bells and whistles, even with all the amenities that this library has to offer. It's still all about the basics, of course, the movies, the books, the music. We're in the collections area right now. We're joined by Holly. So tell us a little bit more about this area. Okay, um, this area is known as our marketplace and is where we put most of our popular materials. We've got DVDs, audiobooks, large print, and a lot of our new things, including our new Check Me Outs. You know, the main library is already huge. And I'm looking at this area. It just seems like it goes back forever. About how many items do you have in this area? We have, um, in the whole library as a whole, we have about 300,000 items, um, 26,000 DVDs in our DVDs. DVD collection right now um, and that's about a third of our overall collection of about a million items. And I want to check this area out over here, the Check Me Out. The What's that all about? The Check Me Out is um, something you will only find at new locations so right now it's only available here at Maine and what it is, is it's about 500 items and they are um, non-holdable customers or patrons will come in and they will literally check the items out so this would normally have about 160 holds right now um, any patron can come in and just grab it off the shelf even if they're on a hold list. And you have this really neat renewal thing going on too right now. Yes, we offer auto renewals. We've offered that for a while and what we do two days before items are renewed, we will um, automatically renew those for you if no one else has them on hold. So if you've given us your email, we will give you a notification saying these items were renewed, these were not able to be renewed, and here's everything else you have checked out so you never lose a due date. And Holly, as you know, this is 2017. When someone wants something, they want it right now. So I'm talking about music on your phone, reading books on your iPad. You guys have something really neat for that as well. As, yes, we do. We have um, an extensive digital collection. Our digital collection has ebooks and e audiobooks from a service called Overdrive. We have magazines available from Zinio, and we have a service called Hoopla, which will give you music, it'll give you audiobooks. Um, movies and television shows. There you go. You could have all those resources right there in the palm of your hand, never even having to leave the living room. But hey, you still should leave the living room and you should check out the new main library. And while you're here, say hi to Holly. The Dayton Metro Library has never been more family friendly. In fact, when you walk into the children's area here at the new main library, it's almost like you're walking into a completely different world. So many things to learn, touch, and see here. Jackie, where was this when we were kids? I know, right? It's so beautiful. Tell me about it. It's amazing. So we actually call this our Imagine Portal because it is your gateway to an entire world of imagination in our brand new children's space, which we are so excited to share with our community. Uh, the great thing about this bridge is that it's not just an art piece. There are staircases on both sides and kids can climb up it, run across, climb down the other side, go back and forth. We've already had a couple of kids here trying it out and they just love it. And I think parents are going to love it too, because it's a great way to run out that energy. And actually it's big enough that if they really wanted to, an adult could fit up there too. It's an adventure for everybody that comes here. We need to go on an adventure and check it all out. Let's go do it. All right. Another great thing about the new main library for Dayton Metro Libraries, of course, the technology aspect of it all. You guys really thought things through on this one. 
We absolutely did. We wanted to include as much of the latest and greatest technology as we possibly could. Um, so in this area, we not only have children's computers for playing games on the internet, doing homework, doing research, writing papers, but we also have three family PC stations. So these are not that different from our normal computers, except that an adult library card will work on them, which means adults can sit down with their children at these computers and work together on homework, whoever's homework that happens to be. Sometimes adults have the homework, right? And it's great because we don't have to separate families. Families can stay together in their library, which that's how it should be. Jackie, I can't get over just the variety, the collection, so many books here, and I would only have to imagine that the staff here, they know this area inside and out. That is absolutely true. Our staff is one of our best resources that we can offer in this department. They know so much about children's literature as well as children's informational books. So if you have that homework project and it's due in two days and you're really stressing, you can come here and we can help you find sources for that. If your kid loves something like Percy Jackson or Diary of a Wimpy Kid and you just don't know where to steer them after they've finished, we've got you covered on that too. Children's books are our love, they are our lifelong passion and we just love to talk about them. I don't think you're going to run out of things to do here. Jackie, thank you so much for taking us around. If you'd like to learn more about the children's area, if you'd like to learn more about the new main library, all you simply have to do is visit DaytonMetroLibrary.org. Well, if you're looking for a venue for a meeting, maybe a wedding, this is the place to be. Diane joins us now. Diane, wait a minute, a wedding at the library? Can you imagine a more inspiring place, a place that evokes just emotions and feelings of community supporting you as you start your new life as a married couple? As a matter of fact, we already have four weddings booked in the month of September in this space. No way! Absolutely. Some brides are having their ceremony here, they're maximizing the park or using our grand staircase as their entrance. Other brides are just using this forum or our grand atrium as their reception site. But I think all of us can imagine uh, dancing the night away in the new main library. It's pretty special. Tell me about the theater. Oh, the theater upstairs on the third floor, the Susie Bassani Theater Off Third, is a black box space. And we envision poetry yeah. readings, dance recitals, different performances taking place in that space, as well as more traditional uses like corporate lunches, business seminars, and things like that. Opportunity spaces. Ah, a new concept yeah. in the library. Opportunity spaces are spaces that are designed with the community in mind. They're designed for the community to activate those spaces and bring them to life. So we've opened these spots up for nonprofits or business partners that may have a new idea or a concept that they want to share. They can utilize our spaces almost as incubator places and not only maximize them and perfect their ideas and concepts but share those with library patrons. I'm curious, <laughs> birthday parties? What about birthday parties? I can't imagine a better place to do a birthday party. You all met Jackie Fullwood, our new youth services director, and I know she'd be happy to help plan birthday parties that would incorporate literature and learning into the theme of the day. Why is this the place to be, do you think? I already know it is, but why do you think? <laughs> well, I think people love to feel inspired by the spaces that they're doing their special events in, and certainly you've heard all of us describe this as awe-inspiring space. It's new, it's different, and, you, and it's unique, but more importantly than that, I think because it's timeless, and the idea of having access to information and being part of something so ingrained in a community as the library just elevates that sense of engagement. Diane, can you hear it? Wedding bells. Da, 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 da. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Thank you, Thank so, you much. so much. Sally. We have so much more ahead. Hey, thanks, Sally. Still ahead on this special thanks, edition Sally. of Living Dayton from making movies to recording your next hit song. We take you to the room where you can make it possible. One of the coolest things about this new library, I have to say, is the technology. You can't miss this area right here on the first floor. You can't miss it at all. We're happy to welcome Craig with Information Services. If you could please come on in, join the party. And I tell you what, seeing all these folks here using the facility, what has been the response been from the public on all the technology? As Sally just mentioned, cutting edge stuff here at the new main library. Patrons are excited. We have enormous amount of technology for them to access. 
the public, businesses, this whole Dayton downtown area can come in here and access unbelievable technology that normally they would have trouble with accessing. What kind of classes do you have? I know you've got some classes. <laughs> oh yes, we have classes. From beginner classes to advanced classes, we try to cover it all from those who need to learn how to use a computer, just the basics, or for those who may be interested in learning how to code, if you're interested in that, we're, we're covering it all. What if somebody just simply wants to come in and use the facility? They just want to be able to use whether they're the desktops or the laptops. Can they come on in and just do that? Yes, definitely. Uh, as you can see, we have it all wide open for people to walk in and use their library card or grab a guest pass to sit down at one of our computers and just explore away. So you can explore or maybe you, you want to do some business. Yes, especially for the business community, the Dayton Metro Library is tailoring our, our locations for you. Please contact us because we have tremendous technology that you can use for your uh, meetings that maybe you don't have the technology at your facility. We have the technology here. That's Craig, awesome. one of the coolest things I think are the laptop dispensers. It's basically, think of it like a vending machine where you get yourself <laughs> uh, a laptop and a lot of people are loving those so far. Yes, they are loving those. For those techies, they are powerful laptop computers. So from if you want to do gaming or if you have a program you want to access from a website, those laptops are able to take care of you. I think it's just awesome. So cool. I mean, it's just, it's neat to be here. Yes. It come explore the library. The technology is here for you. We have uh, trained staff that can actually help you with your technology questions. If you're having trouble with your computer, if you need help with your smartphone, tablet, any question <laughs> uh, for those uh, seniors who are having trouble understanding technology, we specialize. We'll do one-on-one -on -one sessions. We'll talk to you over the phone. By all means, come and check us out. Thank you so much. Uh -huh. This is perhaps my favorite room here in the library. Now we're used to seeing green screens and TV stations. This is typically what someone like Brian Davis, Tara Hastings, Jamie Drosick, they're going to stand up against and they're going to do the weather. You can do so many cool things with this. And just like that, here I am running away from a swarm of zombies. You get the idea. Now the guy responsible for putting all this together, we have Aaron Smith. This really is a neat room and you guys are hoping so many people utilize this thing because this is a great resource. It absolutely is. We uh, started out to make a production studio that was really centered around um, our patrons and especially teens because it's right next to the Teen Edge area to come in and uh, do video production work. And the base idea was to get a green screen up on the wall and um, give them the tools to come in and key their own video and go over to our uh, post-production computer right here and, um, and edit and publish a product. And you can do so much more than making cool zombie movies. You could actually yes. make a song back here if you wanted to as well. Yeah, you can. We, we wanted to keep the room video focused, but we wanted to have audio tools in here as well. So we got this um, Alesis MIDI controller that uh, patrons can use Garage Band to score their videos or or produce a song and it has the normal Apple creative suite But it also has uh, Final Cut Pro and a uh, and compressor for getting your videos to uh, a Web destination lots of high-tech equipment in here as far as using it and knowing how to use it Do you guys help people out to get started? Yes, we do uh, we have uh, we offer brief tutorials our uh, information service assistants are really good uh, with the equipment and they'll show the patron how to get started and also we're going to develop some um, digital media classes based around the equipment in this room. Bottom line here, this is a room where you can truly have fun and just create. If somebody wants to come in, check it out, make their own zombie movie, make their next single, their hit, how do they go about checking this room out? Well, they, they would call the Ask Me line and they can book a session in two hour, uh, two hour increments or they can come in and sign themselves in if it hasn't been booked already. Okay, well, we're already in here now. I say we go ahead and just make a full-length motion picture right now. Let's do it. So we were downstairs. Now we're upstairs. There is really something here for everyone, including teens. And we're happy to welcome Megan here with more on Teen Edge. This space really is a lot of fun because the idea is the kids that get off 
uh, school. They get away out, out from school. They want to they want to come to a place that's a little bit more fun. Of course, they've been studying all day, but at the same time, stick to the books. Oh yeah, we want to have something for everyone, especially in Teen Edge. So after school, if you want to come here and study, we have lots of collaborative spaces for you to work. But if you're done with your work and you want to just take a break and have some fun, we've got some really great gaming stations. We've got fiction that you can browse for fun. We've got comics and manga. We've got it all. No wait, hold on. Did you say gaming? Yes, I did. So we're very lucky here at New Maine. We have a uh, Steam Machine gaming console right over here. And over in the back, we have a PlayStation 4. Each system uh, can have up to four players at a time. So we get a lot of uh, really good matches going on up here. As fun as that sounds, it's not all about fun and games all the time. Let's talk a little bit about the study spaces as well. What are those all about? So we have two study rooms that are exclusively for teens here. Um, we have the study quad and we have a study room that houses uh, up to six. The quad houses four people at a time. We've got monitors in there. So if you bring your own laptop or borrow one of ours, you can hook it up to the monitor, do a presentation on there. Everybody can see what you're doing. You don't have to crowd around a tiny screen. We've also got dry erase boards in there so you can make notes as you go. Um, Really, it's, it's pretty well stocked in there, I have to say. <laughs> you know what else is well stocked? All the books. Oh, yes. And that's probably my favorite part. Don't tell the gamers. <laughs> but we have a really extensive fiction collection right behind us. We've also got nonfiction, audiobooks, comics, um, well, graphic novels if we want to get fancy. Uh, we really have something for everyone, I have to say. But... Now, a lot yeah. of kids that are still in summer break right now. Many of them are starting to go back to school here. Uh, what's been the response so far from a lot of the teenagers that have utilized this space? They're loving it. And I have to say, I'm so glad to see that we already have regular teens hanging out here almost every afternoon. I've gotten to know their names. I know what games they want to play. I usually know what games they want to play before they ask to play them. <laughs> so that's been really fun, too. But everyone's finding their own kind of niche over here. It's a place where everyone knows your name. Oh, it's a world tours now. And I'm Megan, so remember me. <laughs> now, do you need yeah. to sign up or anything ahead of time if you want to use any of these spaces, or can you just come on in and just start right, uh, working right away? I mean, if you want to sit down at any table, you're welcome to do that. We have study rooms that you can reserve in advance, but if nobody's booked it, you can just walk right in. We'd like you to write your name down, but we're open to anyone. And same with the game systems. We do let anybody who wants to come in and play, they get to play for an hour. If nobody's waiting, you can sign up again, but it's been pretty busy in here, which is the best. I'm sure. Yeah. Pretty cool. Oh, yes. Well, we still have a busy half hour ahead of us coming up. We're going to take you to Table 33. Of course, talk about the amazing and delicious partnership between Table 33 and the new main library. It's coming up. Hey everyone, I'm Sally Taylor. Hey, and I'm Zach Pitts. Welcome to a very special library edition of Living Dayton. We have so much more ahead coming up this half hour. Coming up, launching your ideas to new heights. How small businesses can take their business really to a whole new level. We're going to take you to Launch Point and show you the resources that can really grow your ideas. Plus, brush up on Dayton history from Dayton's first map to the first newspaper. It's a blast from the past as we take you through the Dayton Room. And finally enjoying the new library with some great food as well. We take a look at what Table 33 will be serving up. We have so much fun in store this half hour, but first let's begin with another check of news and weather. Hey John. We are so excited to announce that Table 33 is going to open up in the downtown library come this fall. Chef Chris is here. How exciting is that? You're, you're, you're going to stay here in, yes, in your current location. this is going location. to be our, our uh, flagship location. But we are going to activate a 300 square foot spot in the library, like a cafe. Um, so we'll have a third wave coffee bar, fresh pressed juice, and then all of the items that you see here in front of us that we make here on site, we will have boxed for grab and go at the library. But you know what's perfect is you guys are all about fresh and local. Yes. So to be in the new library, that is, it just goes hand in hand. Yeah, it's just an, another opportunity for us to serve the city of Dayton, which is why, why we do what we do. All right, show us what, what's going to be available. So we have, this is actually on our current menu now. It's a curry chicken salad with house-made chips. So this will be an item uh, that will be boxed and ready to go at the library. Things like our goat cheese salad. This is actually a, a new vegan sandwich that we're working on. This is a 
Thai peanut and charred carrot sandwich. Thai peanut? Yeah, so it has carrots that are nice and blackened, and then it has a peanut sauce, red cabbage, red pepper, red onion. How do you blacken your carrots? Very easily. Really? <laughs> <laughs> we cook those on our flat top grill, and then we actually we actually torch them and roast them with fire to, to get them blackened. It adds a nice char, almost gives it like, you feel like you're eating something right off the grill. So. You know what I love about this? You can't find this everywhere. No, definitely not. You know? But you can find it here and at the library early this fall. All right, so let's talk sweet desserts. So uh, one thing that makes us special is that we have an in-house bakery that focuses on gluten-free baked goods. So these are items that uh, we bake in-house every day. This what is, is our, that? This is our cinnamon blueberry muffin. Oh my God. This is gluten-free. This is our gluten-free fudge brownie. And this is actually our banana chip muffin, which is gluten-free and vegan. This is an almond bar. This would be what I like to call the center of a bear claw. This is what that whole thing tastes like. <laughs> so if you know what the center of a bear claw is like, you know what I'm talking about. It's the best part. The whole bar is the best part. And this is our chocolate chip cookie. And we have a few other seasonal items that will rotate in there as well. Go ahead. Eeny, meeny, miny, moe. I Anyone? don't know. The center or the chocolate? I don't know. I got to go for the chocolate brownie. That's good. Gluten-free. You wouldn't know it. You, you shouldn't know it if you do it right. Okay, you're, not only will you have food, desserts, you're gonna have drinks. We will have drinks as well. So like I said, we have the Third Wave Coffee Bar that is all of our beans are roasted locally by Woodboro Coffee. And then all of our fresh, fresh juices, bottled sodas, bottled waters. And we're gonna make an espresso yeah, coming up. We're gonna up. make a latte or a cappuccino with Jesse. All right, don't go anywhere. We are gonna be back with table 33. I'm gonna try the sinful, what is this? No, that's the almond bar. Yeah, but didn't you call it sinful? That's sin sinful blueberry. All right, I'm trying them both. We'll be right back. Also ahead, blasting off and taking small businesses to new heights. How LaunchPoint is giving entrepreneurs the resources to succeed. We are back with Table 33. We are so excited to announce that they are going to be in the new library yes. making food. They're also going to be making drinks. Chef Chris, tell me about the drinks you're going to have at the library. So not in addition to our third way coffee program, like I said, that is sourced all by locally roasted beans from Woodboro, um, we will have canned sodas, bottled waters. Um, we do a, several fresh pressed juices here in-house. My favorite personal is our sup doc, which is carrot, orange, lemon, and ginger. Uh, so we'll have a wide variety of things like that. And then we have uh, our team like Jess here making our lattes and cappuccinos. Okay, chef, now what is he making? So Jess is gonna make our honey latte. So we're using the Woodboro Espresso. Then we have our local raw organic honey. Uh, one thing I love about our coffee program, just like the rest of the restaurant, any of our sauces that or syrups we're making in-house. So we have a house-made vanilla, house-made chocolate, a uh, local organic honey. So he's making a honey latte. Another cool thing about our coffee program is all of our dairy, our half and half whipping cream and our whole milks that we use for our lattes and coffee. It's local as well and it's grass fed from Snowville Creamery. Um, so like the rest of the, the restaurant, we want to use the highest quality ingredients possible. So we're feel good about what we're serving the people that we love. What's your favorite coffee? The honey latte. It's definitely my favorite. It's a unique, uh, flavor profile. The honey kind of reminds me of drinking the milk out of the bottom of a Golden Graham cereal <laughs> when I was a kid. So it is nostalgic every time I taste it. I love it. Uh, we are in your bar. If yeah. anyone wants to come visit you here, uh, full bar. Full bar, full liquor license. Um, we have craft beers on tap from Warped Wing, Toxic, and Fifth Street Brew Pub. And of course your menu is vast. Yeah, it's vast. We have everything, everything you'd want. I love it. All right, so he's finishing up right here. And uh, once again, you think about fall, you should be opening up in the new library. Perfect, early fall. Early fall, and you'll be offering? Uh, Grab and goes, coffees, fresh pressed juices, bottled sodas, bottled waters, some other snack foods that we feel like are health conscious. Salad. Salad, sandwiches. And of course, desserts. And of course, desserts. OK, can we see the end product there, Jess? What do you say? Yeah. That looks great. 
So we are so excited for table 33. Tell us where you are if they want to come here to your restaurant. So this is 130 West 2nd Street, downtown Dayton, on the corner of 2nd and Wilkinson. And you hoping to open again in the library this fall? Early fall, as soon as possible. I love it. We love it here. Come and check them out. And still to come on this special edition of Living Dayton, getting your business off the ground with LaunchPoint, the resource taking small businesses and entrepreneurs to the next level. Plus, a blast from the past. We dive into the area's rich history in the Dayton Room. And remember, you can always join the Living Dayton conversation. That's because when we're not on air, we're still online. Like us on Facebook or tweet us at Living Dayton TV. Well, whether you're a small business, you're an entrepreneur, or perhaps a fundraiser for a nonprofit, or you're simply looking just for a career change, the new Main Library has the resources to get your vision off the ground. One of those key elements, of course, Launch Point. We're happy to welcome Susan and Ann. Ladies, the first thing that I notice when I look at this area, there are two different colors. Why is that? Well, the orange Launch Point is designated the nonprofit center. And blue is for business and career and workforce development. It already sounds like a great resource. Let's go check it out. Okay. Sure. Alrighty, so we're going to start with the orange room. Susan, this of course is for all the nonprofits. Yes, the nonprofit area, all of the materials that I have here are here for nonprofit executive directors, staff persons, board members. It helps all of these organizations get the fundraising that they need to keep their organization going to serve the public in the Miami Valley and to really provide wonderful services here. And if you are new to nonprofit organizations, you've never done it before. That's the one thing we need to let people know that it's not as daunting of a, of a task as you would think because you're there to help them out. Absolutely. And I got my start doing this by going to a library that had a nonprofit resource center and learning how to write grants and a very successful grant writing career. And all of these things can be learned. So we just moved next door into the business room, of course, blue for business. And so let's talk about the workforce development program. What's that all about? Workforce development is a long phrase to describe our job seekers programs here at the library. We do programming every month for those who are looking to make a career change. They're looking for work. They're looking for a new direction in life something related to finding a new job. And it can be scary when you make a career change for just about everybody. You guys make that process a little easier. We do. We have some networking groups and some content that will help you feel more accomplished, more comfortable with that job search. And those meetings happen at our Miami Township branch, our Vandalia branch, and we're starting this fall a new program here at the library called Your Career Plan choice not chance which is for people who want to research where do I go next so they're not surprised when that potential layoff happens. The resources here at the new main library seriously just countless. Check out Launch Point and get your new business off the ground. So from helping you build your business to helping you learn about this awesome city that we live in the library has it all. Zach is heading over to another part of the library with much more. So right now we're about to step in some sort of kind of time machine. You know, Dayton has such a rich history. Whether you've only been living here for a few months or you've been living here a lifetime, I think it's safe to say you can always find something new here in the Miami Valley. We're joined by Jamie McQuinn here in the Dayton Room. What can people learn inside this room? Here in the Dayton Room is where you can find information about Dayton history. We have books, photographs, maps, pamphlets, posters, but most of all, we have our knowledgeable staff who can tell you all about Dayton history, like Nancy. All right, so we're really taking a step back into time. Nancy, I'm told that you know a thing or two about the Miami Valley. That's correct. We have collected materials on Miami Valley, Montgomery County, and Dayton since 1888, when our board said you will collect everything about the town and the area. So we did, and our collection is much earlier than that as well. And we have treasures that we're going to see in the back room. So Nancy, when you were saying that there was some cool stuff back here, you weren't kidding. What are we looking at here? Well, on our left, we're looking at the um, compact shelving. And the compact shelving allows us to uh, 
add so many more materials to our spaces. Um, and we can collect way into the future like we're supposed to do. So things that are in here are uh, manuscript collections like the Wright Brothers in the Paul Lawrence Dunbar collection. We have the largest women's suffrage collection in existence. We just passed some uh, boxes. There are 5,800 files in these boxes wow. of subjects of Dayton that uh, people come in and ask for all the time. We're going around the corner here to the safe. And this safe was from the old library and it holds our most valuable pieces of Dayton history. And what would that be? What would that be? Let's look. Let's find out. We're looking at Wright Brothers original books like this. This is a uh, periodical called Snapshots, a current events. Paul Lawrence Dunbar newspaper out of here. We have the laws of the territory, of the Northwest Territory. Nancy, I feel like you could be back here for hours on end and you could learn so much from you just coming back and, and learning about all the different collections that you have back here. And I feel like Dayton's such an innovative city. We're always pushing forward, but in able to do that, you need to find out where we've been and this is the place you're going to learn how to do that. Folks, don't go away. More local libraries are about to undergo renovations. Find out what you can expect in your neighborhood. Everybody, welcome back to this very special edition of Living Dayton. You know, the main library is complete, Sally, but the renovations are far from over. That's for sure. We are going to welcome back the executive director, Tim. We have had so much fun today at your library. I want you to explain something, though, for me. Libraries for a Smarter Future. What is that plan? Well, we've gotten ourselves halfway through the plan. We've done eight branches. We have eight more branches to do. The main library was a part of that larger plan to allow us to replace, upgrade, expand all of the libraries in the Dayton Metro Library Service area. So I, I guess the first question we have to ask, how are those other branches going to be different? Because we're looking at this, and as Sally mentioned earlier, you just want to, you're, you're in total awe, and I can only imagine that's what you guys have in store for those other branches. Well, as people have visited the branches that we've completed, they've been in total awe, too. They may not have the, the scale of the main library downtown, but they're all special because we have a community engagement process that we invite residents to participate in and helping us define for each of the branches what is going to be special about your community. So as we look to Huber Heights and Northmont and East Day and Riverside, as we are are continuing to do in places like Trotwood. We've got a uh, three branches actually already designed. We're getting ready to start building in uh, in the uh, areas of uh, West Carrollton, uh, Wilmington Stroop, um, as well as Southeast Dayton. And so what we were trying to do is make certain that we're not just doing cookie cutter libraries. So they all have something that's all inspiring about them, but they're all something different. That is so wonderful. We, thank you for allowing us to be here today. Well, I'm so happy you came to visit because people have to come and experience these spaces. They're really awesome, but you have to come to experience it. You've heard it from Tim Cambage, the executive director of your new main library here in downtown Dayton. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Well, we've truly had a great time today checking out the new main library. Right now, folks, it's time for the final 60. It's the other three big things that you need to know about your new main library. Of course, we're in a library, so story time, it's appropriate to talk about that. And every kid loves a good story time. The Mother Goose on the Loose story time, it's happening September 12th from 10 a.m. to 11. Now, that's going to be held on the Children's Creativity Space floor. They'll be using songs, puppets, rhymes, and other fun ways to get the kids involved. For more details, visit DaytonMetroLibrary.org. And you know what? Kids and parents are going to learn together. Starting on September 7th, parents and children from ages 3 to 5 can play school in the children's creativity space. They'll get to learn how to write their names, letter sounds, and so much more to get them ready for kindergarten. Classes will be held on Thursdays at 11 a.m. And finally, fall season is for the poets. The main library is having three poetry workshops and a poetry contest in September. They'll be kicking off with Poetry of the People. That's going to be September 12th at 7 p.m. Visit Dayton Metro Library 
to dot uh, org to learn more. Of course, make sure you also visit LivyDaytonTV.com as well, where you can rewatch all your favorite segments, perhaps ones you may have missed today. And as we just mentioned, visit DaytonMetroLibrary.org because, folks, this really is a fantastic library. I've had a lot of fun today. I have too. I love the Dayton uh, history section too. I love that green screen room. I know we have one of those back at the station, but yeah. they don't let me run away from zombies there. <laughs> hey, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. Days of Our Lives is next.